Hello, my name is Dr. Peter Harrop. I'm from the Analysts ID TechX, and I want to share with you a big materials opportunity. I've called the talk Huge Materials Opportunities in Emerging Photovoltaics. And to do that, I'm going to share some of our report, our new report on materials opportunities in emerging photovoltaics from 2020 to 2040. In fact, the popular view is oversimplified. It is that photovoltaics is a fool's game. Uh, all the leaders are Chinese. The Chinese materials that they use um, uh, are made there because of government policy and uh, the prices are collapsing. And we've all seen graphs like that one where the cost of electricity from solar power is diving down through everything else and effectively it's um, a done deal. Well, that's an oversimplification, uh, but for the main power station replacement, there's a lot of truth in it, as we all know. I want to talk to you not about that, though. There is a parallel universe, and this parallel universe is where conventional silicon cannot go. And it involves all those um, uh, chemicals and formulations, substrates, layers, the transparent, flexible, stretchable, we intend to make tightly rollable. Can you help? We, they probably need to replace the indium tin oxide translucent conductive layer to do that. There's progress towards photovoltaic paint, but the materials issues uh, remain with the three routes, which are quantum dot, organic photovoltaics and perovskites. Toyota on the right, uh, they have a car they're testing with triple junction uh, photovoltaics that covers a very wide spectrum. To put it in one sentence, they hope to get twice the efficiency and over a kilowatt per kilogram, so your car will never have to plug in as a battery electric vehicle. Flexible photovoltaics opens up many markets. Here's a British system. It's about 30 kilowatts, 300 kilowatt version soon, and you unroll it like a carpet. And that can be for your rock concert or to, to drive your agricultural robots or anything in between. Uh, in the case of the sides of existing buildings, you would have to build a strong frame to support glass silicon. It's not economic, you wouldn't do it. Uh, what you do is you go to copper, indium, gallium, diselenide in flexible form, and you put it on like that in a beautiful black format without any supporting frame at all. Another example is the organic photovoltaics is beginning to sell. One of the uh, best in class is a German company, Heliotech, and there they are putting very pretty forms of it in bright blue. Um, two for the price of one, because you go to an old building, you make it look nice, and in addition, you generate electricity. Now, the organic photovoltaics doesn't generate as much electricity, uh, but there are opportunities there. And as they say on their website, it's for where silicon cannot go. Who does the materials? Well, the people doing the materials are people like Merck, uh, which does them for a number of um, applications of the different technologies I have described. Uh, people like Dupont Tagin doing the polyester, uh, polyethylene terephthalate film and um, other uh, famous chemical companies. But let's look at what's needed, where you can help every problem is an opportunity. Copperindium gallium diselenide has an issue because at the moment, usually it uses um, cadmium, which is a, an, an, an unpleasant toxigen, uh, not a large amount of it, but there's cadmium, cadmium sulfide often in the acceptor layer. If you can help remove cadmium, and there are in the universities ways of doing that while even increasing its already high efficiency. So win-win, get that to market, you can help. Uh, copper, zinc, tin, sulfide is much more in the laboratory for the longer term. It has opportunities to go to uh, 
uh, high efficiency, if you could help with that and help with any life issues. Uh, dye sensitized solar cells are not PN junctions, they're actually, actually a photoelectrochemical effect and they have fairly low cost materials. There is slight toxicity possibly with the ruthenium compounds, uh, you could help with that. But that's one where the industry is not really pushing it. The universities and the industry are not pushing it so much now because its progress is not kept up with the others. Uh, cadmium telluride is the exception to the rule. It is used to compete with your crystalline silicon in a field. Uh, and um, it, it can, in addition, be flexible, though, not just in glass. Uh, but there is an issue with cadmium uh, being a toxigen, and there's a lot of it in there. It's tightly bound to tellurium. Uh, but it does require a controlled disposal. It's not obvious that anyone can deal with that cadmium. It's the basis of the product, but uh, there's uh, other issues in terms of um, whether you can use lightweight polymer substrates. Some uh, copper indium gallium diselenide is still on stainless steel, but lighter weight and tighter, more tightly rollable Polymer forms do exist from some suppliers with SIGs, as we call it. Uh, cadmium telluride, that needs looking at. Organic photovoltaics is the one that's undoubtedly non-toxic uh, in everyone's view and potentially tonically rollable. Uh, but you need to uh, probably replace the indium tin oxide to do that. Can you help? and polymer substrates already. Perovskite can go on polymer substrates. It does, however, have quite a lot of lead in it. Can you help remove that lead? Not so much progress there compared with copper indium gallium diselenide, because in the case of perovskite, um, removing the lead gets you very poor efficiency. Please help. Opportunity gap in the market. Gallium arsenide, yes, those are relatively toxic materials, so you need usually control disposal, although you use very little of it in the thin film form and it can go on polymers. Quantum dots, unfortunately, the ones that perform well uh, do contain lead or cadmium and that is an issue and maybe you can help with that. So there are plenty of opportunities as this world, this alternative universe progresses to a very large business. Already it's billions of dollars a year. This isn't a party trick. This isn't a joke. This is a serious industry that is not impacted by the world of Chinese dominated, superb power station replacement, rigid glass product. So let's close at um, a view of, say, 2040. In 2040, the blue is your commoditized silicon. Not going to talk about that. And the pretty colors are the different forms of our parallel universe. And the important thing there is that is not trivial. That is tens of billions of dollars a year sales. And even more importantly, a lot of it is not commoditized. So that part will make disproportionately larger amount of profit. This is the report. This is us. Thank you and goodbye.